Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you can estimate stress relaxation in rubber. So here's an example uh, of the rubber that I tested. Uh, I compressed it to a few percent strain and then I held that strain constant and this figure shows you the stress relaxing over time. This is 10 minutes and you see that's a pretty substantial relaxation. The question though is how much more will the stress relax and how could you estimate this without doing more experiments? How do you think about these types of tests and what you should you do to, be, to better uh, be able to answer these kinds of questions? That's what I want to talk about in our video here today. So let's get started. The first thing I'll do is to uh, yeah, open up a file that I have that I'm going to demonstrate these concepts uh, through. So I have a file here. I'm going to double click on this file. It has time through strain and through stress. It's a single test that I'm going to uh, demonstrate and work with. So how do we look at data? Well, uh, I'm going to just open this with M calibration, and that will help us better see what's going on with this data. So I'm going to go to the data tab to read in the data here. So I'm going to load this data file. And this is the one that I'm interested in. It's time through strain through stress. We'll see that this uh, data looks like this. It has compression to about 50% strain or so. And then we held it for, in this case, 10 minutes, and then unload, continue to load it, unload, hold, and so forth. This is the data that I have. I'm going to try now to extrapolate uh, what's going on in these uh, relaxation regions here. So to do that, I'll first uh, zoom in and, and extract the data points from these individually. So I'm going to change the graph here to have time and stress. It's an easy way to figure out the start and endpoints of stress relaxation segments. So it's going to click here and zoom in. This is the first data point before the relaxation starts. So I click on that. I do Control Shift Up Arrow to select all the points. And before that, I click on the Delete key, and they've been removed. I'm going to extract all the data at the end of this relaxation segment too. I'm going to click on this one, Down Arrow, Delete. Here it is. I'm going to save this file now to my hard drive. I'm going to save it under uh, this folder. I'm going to call it just the file name and uh, relax1. This rubber happen to, happens to be a chloroprene rubber that's uh, lightly filled with carbon black. Uh, so that's the first uh, data manipulation I will do. I will also extract the, uh, the data for the other, the second relaxation segment. So I'm going to load in this file again. This one is the original file. I'm going to plot time versus stress again. I'm going to extract the results in this portion here. So let me zoom in a little bit to figure out which data points we want to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of uh, that point. I do Control Shift, Up Arrow, I delete. And I'm going to delete some points towards the end. I'm going to say that's the last data point for the relaxation, uh, just for, for simplicity. Here it is, uh, the data. I'm going to now, uh, one thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that these files start, files start with zero time. So I'm going to make this column start from zero. And that's, uh, that's all good. And then I'm going to save this file to a uh, file called relax2. Clear this. I'm going to load in the first one we created just to double check what at the time. So this one should start from a zero as well. So I'm going to fix that here. So let's relax one. I want to replace it. I clear the table. And back in the main window of M calibration, I select calibrate. I'm going to read in these files now so we can look at them and uh, work with the relaxation data a little bit better. So first I'm going to read in the original file. So that's experimental time, stress, and strain. Um, and I just click on it here. Open time, stress, strain, true stress, true strain. It looks good. I save it, and here it is. And um, I'm going to save this file, so we have it here. Demo chloroprene rubber. And then I'm going to read in my stress relaxation uh, files that I extracted from the original files. And you'll see why I do this in a little bit. So I'm going to just switch over to stress relaxation. I'm going to load the first one here, relax1. And the time column is 1. I click on this one, we'll see the time through strain through stress is what this file contains. 
temp column, stress column is the third column, and it looks good if I do this. Then it asks me here, what's the relaxation strain? It doesn't matter so much for what we're going to do today, but it's about 58%. So minus 0.58, true strain, and the time to reach that was about six seconds. So I'm going to save this one here. Now you'll see that it, it's plotted here, uh, and it only has this portion. We got rid of all the stress strain data before the relaxation and after the relaxation. I'm going to read in the second relaxation segment as well. I go to uh, stress relaxation. I'm going to select the second one, relax two, uh, open that. Stress column is three in this case, just like the previous one. And the relaxation strain is zero point, what did we pick for the last one? 58, zero point minus 58. And it took about six seconds to, to load it there. Um, here it is. I'm going to save this one. So now we have the, these two relaxation segments in blue and green, and we have the whole data set there. Um, I'm going to plot two, call, two figures side by side. I select the right one. And on this figure to the right, I'm going to plot stress versus time. And it shows us all three load cases. Now, to make this more interesting, I'm going to deactivate the original load case. And now we have a figure to the left that shows a stress strain, and that one is time stress. The figure to the left is not all that interesting because the stress relaxes from here to here. So I'm going to not show that anymore. I'm going to click on the one button here, only show the figure to the right. So this is the data from these relaxation segments that were part of the original experiment. And the reason for doing this to, to extract them and do it in this plot is we can see them side by side in a better way. They both start from zero time here. And uh, well, it's a little hard to say how much they're going to relax when you plot it this way, obviously. And uh, the key here, the trick that you need to remember is that you should plot logarithmic time instead of linear time. So I switch this over to logarithmic time. You will see that this is very much more useful. We'll see up to one second, perhaps not that much relaxation, but then the relaxation experimentally is almost linear. This, this change in stress is almost linear with logarithmic time, both during uh, this portion and in this portion. And this is very common for many polymers. For rubbers in this case, there is a little bit more to say about it because this is a lightly cross-linked elastomer. So uh, this uh, relaxation that we see here will not continue forever. In fact, that the green one is actually um, increasing in magnitude, and the blue, blue one is decreasing. And these are approaching each other, which will be the ultimate relaxed state of the material, and they can't go any other way. So this will not extrapolate forever, but it will uh, reach a similar to this. So it kind of slow down a little bit, and that's a unique feature of rubbers, that, they, uh, that this logarithmic extrapolation rate that is very common um, isn't going on forever due to the cross-linking network in the material. Um, but this is clearly much easier to extrapolate, say, 2,000 seconds here, or, or 5,000 seconds, if you were to plot it out in that way. Um, so let's look at this data again, just looking at true stress, true strain. We'll see that here in a better way, that as you compress it, the stress will relax if you have, hold the strain constant. It will relax and it relax. And then as you continue to compress it, the stress will go up. And then you're unloading it, it will go down. And then here's the key. As you hold the string constant during unloading, the stress increases. And this point will keep going closer to this one. So there will be an equilibrium state in the material for many elastomers that this is trying to reach. And the rate at which it approaches that is what we are talking about based on these logarithmic plots. Um, and why is this uh, th this way? Well, it has to do with this rheological representation of uh, the rubber itself. And in the bergstrom boyce model, which is a commonly used material model for a rubber-like materials, we have two networks. We have an equilibrium network, and then we have viscoelastic network. And uh, the equilibrium networks gives you the response in the middle of this uh, load-unload cycle. And that is what we see in the relaxation test that it's trying to approach. And uh, then we have the relaxation portion of of the response that is driven by um, 
the reputation-based configurational changes of the molecules in the material, that gives you this logarithmic dependence of the stress as we plotted uh, earlier. So that's why it has to switch between the two because we have the equilibrium backstress network and then we have the viscoelastic network that it approaches. Uh, but that's how you would extrapolate the response uh, into larger times when you're working with the rubber. And um, I haven't even talked about material models. There are many material models that can do this for you. Many of the traditional ones for rubber, like the Bergstrom Boys model that I just mentioned, has a very good predictor of this kind of response. Um, Hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them below.